Richard Lindzen, William Happer, thank you both for coming on the show. It's an honour. Um, President Biden is hosting a summit tonight, our time, to fight what he calls a climate emergency. His climate envoy, John Kerry, says it's an existential crisis. And 101 Nobel laureates, including the Dalai Lama, says, yes, we do face a climate catastrophe. Action, please. Are they all right? Professor Linson, if I could start with you. No, of course not. I mean, it's ludicrous. Um, it's amazing how you can get this sort of enthusiasm for something so profoundly implausible. And, uh, you know, if I trace back, it's, it's a purely political narrative. As has been pointed out before, uh, the notion of climate as an existential threat is something even the enthusiasts for a climate alarm don't suggest, not the UN's IPCC, uh, hardly anyone. But uh, the politicians realize that uh, their political aims are so extraordinarily expensive and damaging that the only excuse they could give for them is that it's an existential threat. And for some reason, this appeals to them. Well, it does. Professor Happer, looking around at the data, looking out the door, I mean, are you seeing the existential threat, the climate disasters, the, the uh, terrible catastrophe that is, we're told day in, day out is confronting us? Well, of course, uh, you know, Dick Linson put it correctly, and... Uh, I would go further. I would say that all of the uh, uh, objective evidence is that in the increases in CO2 are benefiting the earth. You know, the earth is getting greener. You know, deserts are shrinking. You know, no, none of the terrible things you hear are happening, you know, and quite, quite the opposite is happening. Uh, and uh, that's completely uh, expected because most of the geological history, CO2 levels have been much higher than now. You know, they've been three, four, five times higher than now. And plants are adapted to growing at much higher CO levels, CO2 levels. And of course, we, we depend on plant growth for our survival. And so there's nothing bad about increasing carbon dioxide. Uh, Professor Linson, uh, looking at the latest satellite data, the University of uh, Alabama at Huntsville uh, data from the uh, uh, NOAA satellites up, up there, I know it's a mistake always to go in a, a month of data, the latest month of data or even the latest year, but it shows the temperature in March for the planet was just below the long-term average from the end of uh, last century. Um, are we actually seeing the global warming that the climate models have predicted? Of course not. I mean, virtually every model is exaggerated. Uh, it's, the predictions it made some years ago all were much higher than we've seen. Uh, and, you know, we have no reason to believe that what we've seen is due to CO2. Uh, you know, how shall I put it? Uh, when this issue began, I, you know, 30 some odd years ago, uh, they would point to the record and make, you know, sort of, I guess they assumed correctly that people wouldn't notice a graph that was going up was only going up a fraction of a degree. Uh, people seem to have no conception of magnitude. But it was negligible. It was, you know, poorly measured. Uh, just was silly. And um, it's now, I think, what I see in the literature, you know, on newspapers and so on, not the scientific literature, is they've dropped really most pretense that they're talking about temperature. They'll show a picture of a glacier retreating and people will go, that's terrible and, uh, you know, we must do something. But this has long since left science, even though they've managed to entrain all sorts of scientific organizations into endorsing them, many of them having no relation to climate, whatever. And yet there has been, Professor Happer, a very slight warming over the last century and a half. 
Uh, you've already mentioned that there has been a greening of the planet. We've seen that from uh, NASA satellite data again, uh, a greening over the last 20 years. Now, I'm just wondering if there is a continued warming, is that overall good for us or bad for us? Well, I think it's clear that modest warming is good for the uh, world. You know, for example, if you look at excess deaths of humans, uh, uh, there are far more deaths from cold than there are from warmth. And uh, even if the models, you know, don't predict very much warming uh, where it's already warm, they predict warming uh, at high latitudes, you know, closer to the poles where it's cold. So none of this is bad. It will give longer growing seasons, you know, better crop yields. Uh, there, there's nothing to fear from warming. But Professor Linson, yeah. we, when we mention this sort of thing, we're told, uh, by, oh, yes, a little warming might be good. But then there's a tipping point, you know, if it's uh, and the measure varies, whether it's one degree or two degrees or three degrees or whatever. And then it's <coughs> going to be a catastrophe. Can you tell me for a start, what warming do you predict by, say, I don't know, the end of the century? And when will any warming become a problem for us? I don't anticipate much more change in temperature, either cooling or warming, than a degree by the end of the century. But, you know, very few people even know what this metric is. You know, how do you take the temperature of the Earth? I mean, you know. Without getting obscene, I don't know how you do it. If you plotted the actual data points on those graphs, you'd see that at any given location, it was as likely to cool as to warm. And then there's a small residue, which is this temperature of the Earth, so to speak. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, what would be the point of the prediction even? It wouldn't tell you anything about your location. That's true, and uh, none of us will be around to see whether it's true or not anyway. Um, yeah. Professor Happer, uh, even if there is, um, even if the warming continues, um, even if it then starts to be more bad for us than good, can you tell me what it is, in fact, that we could possibly do to stop it that where the pain would be worth the gain, the pain of cutting our emissions and spending all these billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, uh, to retool our economies, at what point do you think we should say, hey, listen, this may not actually be worth it? Well, uh, there's uh, no uh, value to anything that's being proposed by the politicians, even if you take the flawed computer models that uh, are used to generate alarmist scenarios, they show that the these horrendous measures which will hurt poor people most, lower income people most, uh, you know, at most limit uh, forecasted temperatures by a fraction of a degree. You can't even feel a fraction of a degree. You know, people don't realize how small the effects of uh, CO2 are. Go ahead, Professor Linson. Yeah, no, I just go a little further. I mean, uh, you know, Will was suggesting that before, but the Earth over the last 600 million years, let us say the period when you've had advanced life forms, has first of all generally been much higher CO2, uh, but it's, it's changed temperature and uh, there's been almost no correlation. I mean, you yeah. asked, you and know, how noticed, far uh, would you... It, it... And I've noticed in past the uh, periods of global warming, we've had the warming first followed by CO2 increases, not the other way around. Professor Linson, Professor Happer, thank you both for uh, your time. It's been terrific. Thanks, Mr. Good Paul. Night.